What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Another week to talk about football. A little different this week. We are actually combining our college football podcasts and NFL podcasts into the same show. So if you didn't see two episodes come out this week, that's why. So you are in the right place. Uh, we're going to do about 20, 25 minutes of each and obviously talk about our picks at the end. So last week, lots of upsets. We're going to do college football first. Lots of upsets. Very sad Irish fans. Very sad Texas A&M fans. Very sad Nebraska fans, but also happy Nebraska fans because they finally fired Frost. So what are you guys' thoughts about last week? What were what some of the biggest points that came out to you from week three college football? Or Texas. Week, week two, I guess. Texas was a lot better than I thought they'd be. Texas I didn't watch is- it. I didn't watch it, but from the sounds of it, it sounds like they sh- should have won. They sh- did you you didn't see any of it? I saw like the first two minutes. I watched so, the first half. I watched. I heard the that they missed a field goal right before halftime. They yeah, did. from I like watched, twenty-two I yards. The, I watched the whole fourth quarter. Texas is actually fucking pretty legit. Um, we talked. We talked about it last year. Like, I think they just quit on Sarkeesian in like the weirdest way. Like it was kind of <laughs> like. They just didn't want to play football anymore. But Texas is Texas is pretty good. Uh, honestly, there was a part of me that was like, "Damn, Bama's got about to get beat and then go eleven and one back into the fucking playoffs." But they won. I, I do think Texas is probably like as upset as their fans would have wanted to win. Like they got a pr- they could win the Big Twelve easily. Like, oh yeah. But also Notre Dame. I mean, fucking that was just pitiful. That was. Well, shout out the Sun Belt though. Three and zero, big three wins. Like, shout out Clay Helton getting the win over fucking Nebraska, getting Scott Frost fired. I do agree, Nagy though. Like, I think Nebraska fans have to be kind of happy. Like, he fucking sucks. It was not good. I, I mean, it's so hard. And I, they talked about his uh, his resume with Nebraska going into that game in uh, Ireland for Week Zero. Yeah. And it was like, why? I mean, they were just talking so much about Nebraska having like a 10 win season on the yeah. upside for the season. And it was just like, it's, it's kind of, it's almost reminds me of like how people talk about the Vikings for an NFL comparison for like the past three or four years. Yeah. Maybe not this year because the Vikings are actually fucking looking really solid this year, but it's just, you have to have some sort of impressive push or show of improvement before you can make these allegations or predictions that a team is going to be pushing like top 15 by the end of a season. Right. A hundred percent. And like every year their quarterback's been in the Heisman comp contention. And it's like before the season starts, obviously and it's like, why? But yeah, Nebraska, obviously that's a big storyline. Um, and m though, like, Jimbo talks all this fucking shit just to lose at home to App State. Like, buddy. I'm so tired talking? of a and <laughs> I'm so tired of them. They, every year. It's the same thing as Nebraska, except for a and goes 9-3, and three, and people say they're going to go 12-0. and, and their nickname goes, is, it's why their nickname, I think I said this last week, it's why their nickname is Texas A&4. It's yeah. the same <laughs> it's I've never weird. heard that nickname before. I like that, though. Oh, yeah. Um, did you but, see the their pep rally Friday night? Yeah, I did. And it, it was the most, it was cr- awful. This is the most <laughs> cringeworthy thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I've been to Notre Dame pep rallies, and that was the most cringeworthy thing I've ever seen. If you're a recruit, if you're a recruit, I would take them off my list if I saw that. Yeah, and then you see the money that they Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's nice. But don't you think sooner or later, though, these guys who are spending all this money are going to be like, look, Jimbo, like we want Texas and football to be good, but you better start winning because we're not paying all this money for you guys to go nine and three and eight and four. Like at some point you have to get over the hump, right? Like, or at least go well, 10 and, and two. Like, and then, didn't, didn't Jimbo get like a 10 year extension after like, I think after they won the, we're doing what? Orange Bowl or whatever bowl they won. Uh, I don't know what they won. But whatever it was, it was game game against, against, might have been the North Carolina win. It was, but like I, yeah, it was whatever that bowl game was, it was New Year's six, then he got an extension. It was like, okay, this is 
kind of wild. What are we doing here? Um, yeah, I mean, Notre Dame, if you want to listen to that, you can go listen to Irish Inside. They have way more on that. Obviously, that's a huge storyline. Marcus Freeman's first coach ever to lose his first three games. Granted, two of them were pretty fucking tough games. But my biggest thing on Notre Dame is the only thing I'm going to say about them is they are the worst second half adjustment teams I maybe have ever seen in my life. They don't know how to make them. They just don't make them, I guess, maybe. But um, I've already had my I had my vent session on Monday. Yeah. You can hear more about that uh, this weekend, though. There's some interesting games that I think can really make or break, uh, you know, conferences in a sense. Like, I think this the Big Ten has not looked good no. other than Ohio State and Michigan, but Michigan also has, like, the softest non-conference schedule ever. But Auburn at Penn, Penn State at Auburn is a big game, I think, for the Big Ten. I think Miami at AM is a big game. If Auburn and AM win, you're sitting there like, okay, the SEC is seems more dominant than normal almost. Like they've been pretty good outside of LSU losing to Florida State. Obviously AM, but like if you can beat Miami. So it's a big weekend in terms of those. Oh, Michigan State at Washington. That's another big game too, where it's like if Washington wins that, like is the Pac-12 not as bad as everyone freaked out week one? Because, like, Utah might go 11-1. and one. Washington could beat Michigan State. You're looking at teams now that, like, Washington State, who wasn't supposed to be good, went on the road and beat Wisconsin. Like, they're getting solid wins. So, also, I think the Georgia-Oregon game was a bit – like, Bo Nix is not good. But if Oregon turns around and beats BYU, it's like maybe Georgia's just that good. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you anybody can hold the results against an Al. I mean, that's what makes Texas's performance so impressive was because it was against Alabama. But I don't think you can go around and say like, "Oh, Oregon's ass" because that Georgia made them look like dog shit. Georgia's going to make ninety eight percent of college football teams look like dog shit. That's just kind yeah. of the nature of the beast that are the top of college football. So I'm right there with you. I agree. Like, I think. I think this BYU Oregon game is going to be amazing. This yeah, it's yeah. it's a huge game because like yeah. BYU, they already beat Baylor. They're and, setting themselves up. They could go to the playoffs. Yeah. Like I, I think the Oregon Oregon home atmosphere is super underrated too. Like it's definitely the highlight of oh yeah, one of the probably the brightest highlight of Pac-12 football is Oregon at home in a big big game. Um, it's it's fun watching those, especially when they used to be like playoff relevant those games you, are so hype so BYU goes in and wins like they're a top 10 team right yeah I would say I think they are, are they're top 15 right now yeah I mean I don't care what the AP rankings say I've, I've had that gripe for the last <laughs> three years about how AP rankings are the most dumb shit ever but like oh, yeah I think they're probably a top 10 team but yeah I'm saying like in Europe I would say yeah but you know, they're they're Baylor was supposed to be like a really tough opponent. Obviously, I think Baylor's good, but they already got by him. You go on the road, you beat Oregon. I don't care what that's a fucking good ass win. Like, why does anyone think they couldn't beat Notre Dame in Vegas? Like, they easily can. And you run the table there. You just need Notre Dame to go eight and four, which that's probably a big ask. And Oregon to go like nine and three. Baylor to continue to compete in the Big Twelve and like you have as good as a resume as anyone in the country to argue that if Cincinnati get in, got in last year, they should get in this year. Then if they if they go undefeated, oh, they yeah. lose one, they lose one game, they're out. I agree. I think I think that'd be so great, and I I don't know. I kind of like rooting for BYU for the same sense as like they kind of get a weird rep just because like the school Mormons kind of thing. It's just kind of fun to root for a a team that's kind of different from everyone else I like I like I've said in past weeks I'm not the biggest college football guy on these podcasts I kind of go more off the field than anything so don't take my word to your sports book and we'll get to the picks obviously in a little bit who what what's what game are you guys looking forward to most this weekend Mm. um Purdue Purdue Syracuse that's a sneaky good game that, like, also could mean a lot. Like, I think Syracuse is pretty good. I think Purdue could be pretty good. But Syracuse beats them. Purdue, you know, makes a little run. Because the Big Ten West yeah. is horrific. 
And we were just talking about like some of the top teams in the Big Ten, like the Auburn uh, Penn State game, or right Auburn Penn yeah. State. So yeah. it's kind of interesting because when you compare like Big Ten to ACC, like the Big Ten is kind of running out of like, oh, we're right behind the SEC in terms of like conference strength. But like last week, Duke like manhandled Northwestern. Yeah. That, and Duke's not good. I know. It was so crazy. I had Northwestern, like my I bought points and got and like yeah. minus six and a half and it was fucking dead like halfway through the second quarter. It was crazy. And and another loss for the Big Ten is like as bad as Iowa's offense is, they still will probably win eight games this year. And Iowa State beat them on the road. Like the Big Ten obviously Ohio State like yeah Notre Dame lost to Marshall but they did beat a good team so like it's like well actually I don't know Notre Dame could go fucking five and seven but like they Ohio State beat someone but like that's what I'm saying this Penn State game it might be the best win outside of like what what if Notre Dame goes nine and three eight and four that's the best win but like this Penn State win might be the best win if they can get it or Michigan State beating Washington at Washington because I think Washington's pretty good this year. That could be the best win. Like I really don't know what Purdue Syracuse. That might be a better win if Purdue wins that. Like for the Big Ten, like Big Ten it has it. Yeah, huh? that's said it could be. I like Oregon and Nebraska. Yeah, no Oklahoma and Nebraska. That's my game to watch. You think you think the boys get up? They're like Scott Frost is gone. I I I'm. Looking at that game, I uh I heard uh through some people that they were not that upset that Scott if they were around the program that Scott Frost got let go. He I guess was like partying like at the bars in Lincoln, oh, wow. doing that kind of like Urban Meyer, Lane Kiffin kind of thing, and like he would like hire like females. And then fire them after like a month, and it's like, why are you doing that? Why have you done that ten times? And like, yeah. so I think there was a little more shit that I'm actually kind of surprised that Nebraska kept I him. Thought, tweet that Urban Meyer will be in Lincoln on this weekend. Oh, Fox Big Noon kickoff, right? Oh, is he? Where does he work for Fox? Yeah, he's back on the new the oh, Fox. Never mind. Kickoff. Never mind. <laughs> oh, you thought it was legit? Urban right? Mill over. Yeah, it was. I, I heard that their number one guy is Matt Campbell. That's who they want to throw like all their eggs in. The honestly, if you're Matt Campbell, I, why go to Nebraska? I get it. Like Nebraska is a traditional powerhouse. Yeah, That's but like I, if you if you ask me, I think Iowa State's a better program than than Nebraska. I agree. percent. I mean, two years ago they were playing in the Fiesta Bowl. Iowa State was. It wasn't. It's not like they're like like they've been getting more and more talent. It's just yeah. like I. I don't know. If you're Matt, and, Matt, and Matt, Iowa State's path to a playoff is going to get a hell of a lot easier because Texas and Oklahoma are leaving. 100% true. And also, if you're Matt oh. Campbell, why wouldn't you wait for a better job? Like, if right. you can get Nebraska, you can probably get a better job that you have a better chance of winning at. That And, like, and Nebraska is like one of those jobs where, like, yeah, you'd be a rock star if you, like, bro- rose, like, brought them from the ashes. But also, it can – you can be next Scott Frost. You could be fired in three years. And now, now who knows where your career is going to go at this point? Yeah, I just don't – like, when I think of, like, you know, oh, it's good when USC is good again. Oh, it's good if Michigan's good again. Oh, it's good if Miami is good again. Oh, it's good if Florida State's good again. Like, Nebraska does not cross my mind in that conversation. So, like, I don't – I don't think they, like, really push the needle anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they're just not in that conversation of like, oh, it'd be sweet if they're good again. Like, I feel that way about Miami 24-7. I feel that way about Texas. I feel that way about Tennessee. And Tennessee is like close. They're Tennessee, close. too. Like, those are schools, though, that, like, have had more success than uh, Nebraska. But, like, yeah. I think they, they fit the mold better. But, yeah, I, I think it's a huge weekend for not – like, this is, like, obviously, you know – one of the last weekends of non-conference opponents. I think there's some sneaky good games that could really like kind of hinder on. I think the big tens argument always is like, we don't have, 
a Georgia or an Alabama or insert LSU or insert whoever the best SEC team is that year at all. We are not going to beat them, but our four through 10 is way better than their four through 10. And this year, I just don't think that's true. Like, no. so not like, I just, this is a huge weekend for those four through 10 teams for the big 10. You're saying for the big 10. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the SEC is far and away the team, the conference to beat this year. It's because yeah, it's, Tennessee, it's, you have Florida, you have Kentucky, you have. I was going to say, Florida, like Utah could easily be like a top 15 team. And like yeah. Florida beats them and then turns around and Kentucky goes on the road and beats Florida. It's like, that's just. I just feel like that that Kentucky one was so like, looking back at it, I was like, yeah, I that, that kind of was kind of obvious just because. So it was a perfect letdown spot for Florida, for sure. And Kentucky's pretty good, though. Like they yeah, are pretty. They're, good. they're not bad. So, yeah, that's all I have this week for college. So, Ryan, anything else? No, I don't. It's kind of a. I know we we said this before we press record, but it's kind of a a, a sad slate of football games. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it should it's it's about to get really good. Like. Like you mentioned, with the conference games coming next week, a yeah. And M A and M Miami would have. Been oh, more. that's a good game. I forgot about that one. But that would have been even more interesting if a And M didn't shit the bed against App State. Well, here's the thing, though. If if Miami beats Texas A and M, I don't think there's a team on Miami's record. I think Miami can go twelve and zero. Yes, I don't know. Just, if, I don't know if they play Clemson in the regular season, but it, they that could. Would be a great ACC championship game. They could, but they also, even if they lose to AM, could go eleven and one. Yeah, and like, well, I, like when, I like when AM loses. So I yeah, I hate Jimbo, but then it's like again, like the SEC is just flexing their muscles like crazy because like, what if fucking Utah wins the Pac twelve? Like it's just like, what the fuck is going on here? Well, A and M can't flex their muscles because they lost to the Appalachian State at home. No, no, I said the SEC will flex their oh. muscles. Yeah. Like, it's just another flex for the SEC, which is, like, ridiculous. Because, like I said, normally they normally they do have, like, better top-tier teams. But, like, normally it's, like, their bottom-tier teams that are winning this year that are, like, winning again. And it's like, okay, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, even the, even the Tennessee win over Pitt. Like, that's a good win for, like, a Tennessee team. I know Pitt didn't have their quarterback, but, like, Pitt's gonna go nine and three, eight and four. Well, who knows without a quarterback? But like, did that's a good one. Uh, did you see the A and M and App State A and M or App State's? It was like a two to one comparing for play, like plays. Like there was like they had eighty, and A and M only had like forty something. Oh no! They had over half, or yeah, they had double what A and M ran. So yeah. they had two thirds of the total plays ran. How is that Same possible? <laughs> That's probably why it's AM a only scored 14 points. I was like, how do you only score 14? And then I was like, oh, you only ran 39 plays. That make, kind of makes sense. Did App State like just hold the ball the whole time? They, yeah, it was the tweet I, was like it was like it was scheme over talent because they I just didn't know that. they schemed that win. That's yeah, so Jimbo embarrassing just, when a small school can come in with a scheme like that and just carry it through all four quarters yeah. and never I'll, force I'll, 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 let me look that up. I, I want to get the exact stat because that's insane okay but while you look while you, you look that up, while you look that up we'll give our i'm gonna start my card all right real quick before we get into our cards i might as well um plug our partner so even if you have other sports books even if you don't uh we are partnered with bet us so if you would like a nice sign-on sign bonus, if you never created an account on BetUS, you can find our affiliate link in the description of this YouTube video. Uh, check it out. They got great sign-on bonuses. You get 125% match on your first deposit if you use if you use cash. So if you put in 100 bucks, you get $125 credit through the site. If you use cryptocurrency, so say you use Bitcoin, they will give you 200% uh, add-on bonus on your initial deposit when you first sign up with BetUS. So if you put $100 worth of Bitcoin in, they'll give you $200 worth of BetUS credit. So you can bet 
and play with it like it's real money. So do that. Good luck. We're going to get into our picks. Again, that link is in our description. If you use that, it helps us out as a podcast as well. So we really appreciate it. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please subscribe. We're really close to a thousand subscribers. Um, fucking me and Ryan said that we would put sour cream in our coffee for the podcast when we hit a thousand subscribers. Disgusting. And I see Michael's. <laughs> oh, that was from uh, the quarterback in the NFL that likes to, or whoever he is. Yeah. Yeah. It All came right, up. So that, good. The, uh, the play differential between App State and AM was 82 to 38. Okay. That's even ridiculous. Wow, that's even worse. Real quick before we give the cards to just so everyone knows where we're at on the season through two weeks of college football. Ryan, Ryan is dominating right now, sitting the only person in positive units. He is 17 and 10, uh, plus 6.46 units. I am eight and nine minus 1.95 units. Um, and Michael and Zach have some work to do. Um, both minus 10 plus through two weeks. Jesus, dude, that's fucking pathetic. Also, even a bigger deal is the do or dies, which we mentioned last week. If any of us lose three college football do or dies in a row, we're subject to a punishment chosen by the other colleagues of the podcast. Uh, so right now, me. Michael and Zach are all 0-2 so far through the season, so we're all on a two-game losing streak already. Is Ryan, um, is Ryan on a one-game losing streak? Yeah, Ryan Ryan won his the first week, and we all lost our do-or-die bets on week two. So the do-or-dies are, uh, are very due to fucking hit. All right. Fuck, I forgot about that. All right. I'm giving my card. I need a game. Michael said, let me change my tour. No, no, no. Okay. I got Florida Florida State minus two and a half. Syracuse minus one and a half. Auburn money line plus 128. Auburn plus three and a half. Kansas plus 10. LSU plus two and a half. LSU money line plus 106. And my do or die. I will probably have more plays, but those are the only ones like, I don't know. Because I've started off so poorly, I've like kind of tried to look at lines a little more. And those are the ones that I liked jumping out. I am riding the SEC bandwagon this weekend, so they'll either fuck me or, like, it'll be great. What was your do or die? You want me to say it now? Oh, no, you can say it for the end. It don't matter. All right. Uh, Florida State minus two and a half. Syracuse minus one and a half. BYU plus three and a half against Oregon. Miami plus six and a half against AM, USC minus 12 and a half, Georgia minus 24 and a half, Mississippi State minus two and a half, Notre Dame Cal under 40 and a half, uh, and Nebraska plus 11. Boo. All right. Well, I also have some of those. Never mind. No spoilers. Um, similar to Michael, I have Florida State minus two and a half. Uh, did you take that too, Ryan? Which one? Florida State. Yes. Oh, I, no. That, all four of us. I don't think I can bet that now. God <laughs> damn. Oh, no. It's already on your card. Sorry. It's locked. Um, Purdue and Syracuse over 60. Um, Indiana, Ooh, like. Indiana is hosting uh, Western Kentucky, so I'm taking the under 62 and a half. These games have been ugly. IU, IU actually has some studs on defense, so hopefully they can, like, play four quarters. Um, Nebraska, money line, off the firing of the head coach. Again, no, that's what I, was, I was looking that way, too. So, okay. Oklahoma, Oklahoma at two. Nebraska, Nebraska money line, plus 315. I like the odds. I'll take them. Nebraska at home. Uh, Oregon minus three and a half against BYU. I think everyone's going to be really hot on BYU. And like we mentioned earlier, I think Oregon is really good at home. <clears throat> and then Ohio State minus the 32 uh, at home against Toledo. Yeah. yeah. And then um, um, when we do Zach's card real quick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Zach, like we mentioned, Zach also has Florida State minus the two and a half. That's a Friday game at home against 
Are they on the road for that, actually? They're on the road. They're on the road. That's Louisville. Okay. Um, Zach has Oklahoma minus 11 at Nebraska. Georgia, South Carolina, under 55. Um, Ole Miss, minus 16 and a half. Wake Forest, minus 16 and a half. Akron, Tennessee, over 67. Uh, Miami, plus five and a half. And we'll get to the do or dies. So these are all of our do or dies. Again, me, Michael, and Zach must win our do or dies this week to avoid punishment uh, for three do or die losses in a row in college football. So we, we really need these. Last uh, Again, reminder, last year, some of the punishments included Ryan going vegan for a week. Um, I ate extremely hot fucking wings. Um, I had to tweet at Sarah Spain nice things for a week. That was <laughs> that was way more painful than the wings, I promise you. Um, and then I think Zach had one thing, but I can't – or, no, Michael did the burgers, right? You did the – you tried to do 10 burgers in a podcast? That was two years ago. Two years ago. I think I did the burger thing, too. That was awful. Stomach was yeah, absolute right. glue. Uh, I, can, I don't know if I can do any stomach stuff this year, but yeah. um, I am switching Louisville plus two and a half Louisville money line. Oh. I, I can't do it. I can't, okay. just can't do it. So I'm going <laughs> Louisville, plus, Louisville plus two and a half Louisville money line. They're at home. <laughs> I like how you like double down and take off. <laughs> now he's like, neither of these are your do or die now, right? No, 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 no. I, I was just I, making I, sure. Like, that would have been I, that would have made it even more funny if you if you got like, I don't know. I just I don't really I didn't like that game, but it was just like I don't know. I just <laughs> I didn't like it, but I loved it. But now that everyone has it, I hate it. But, you think it's it's total square pick now? Yes. <laughs> I actually think whoever was at home would win the, is going to – like I've talked myself now into whoever is at home is winning this game. So I have – because that that's the first game this week. And so yeah. that's the first game you see when you look at gambling lines. And like that was the – like I've talked myself in and out of that game. Like last weekend, UCF, I literally said like, I don't know. I think Syracuse is pretty good. I think Louisville is going to beat them. And then I was just like, no, Louisville sucks. And UCF <laughs> has fucking Gus Malzahn. But also, that's why. UCF has fucking Gus, Gus Malzahn. He's horrible. Mm-hmm. But I'm switching my pick. Um, my do or die is Syracuse money line minus 120. Kind of a weird that they're only minus 120 when, the, when they're minus one and a half. But – it's only 120. I'm going to take them to win. Watch them win by one point, and that would save me. But Syracuse minus 120 money line. That is my do or die. <laughs> Ryan. I have uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma over 66. Ooh. Nebraska at the score. I am – I mean, I, I got the money line on my card, so – I can't I can't squander my confidence in Nebraska for the fuck uh Scott Frost game. So I I gotta do Nebraska plus the eleven at home against Oklahoma as my do or die. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> that, dude, that is such a risky do or die. What if they're fighting to lose by 30? Bro, Brian, I'm Brian, going down Brian. in I'm going down in the flames. This is for a punishment. It might as well be a fucking glory pick and just. But he also, he's also he's also zero and two anyways. It's not like that he's been work. What's he's been doing has been legit. working. We're we've seen we've seen this happen in the NFL too, and not. I mean, I recall it more in the NFL. But when coaches on mediocre teams or bad teams get fired after they start like one and five, one and six, they be a good team the next week. If it's yep. amazing, they just rally also, around it. But also, you don't have – they don't have to win. They just – they can lose yeah. like 10. And Oklahoma, like, they tend to play again. Like, I, well, yeah. who did they play last year, week one, then that super close game that they almost lost? Uh, it was Labor Day weekend. Fuck. I don't remember, but they played Arby a few years ago and almost lost to them, so. 
All right, so I lo- I'll, I'll take the yeah, 11 I'll points fall. all day long. All right. Oh, and what's Zach's? All right, Ryan. Peace. See ya. Uh, I don't know what Zach's is. Um, Zach's up. is uh, USC minus 12 and a half. I don't know. Right. I don't. Who are they playing? Um, Fresno State at home. Okay. Just fixing All right. View. Get into the NFL now. All right. Um, so NFL. I loved every second of week one. Me and my roommate got Sunday ticket, and you know it's 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 better than Chris. It's it's really close to like a Christmas morning when you're eight, seven, six years old. You run downstairs, open the presents. That's the same kind of feeling I I get the past couple of years when it's about twelve thirty and all the games are about to start. It's just an unmatched yeah. feeling. Before the game, did you actually think the Bears were going to win? No, but I definitely thought they were going to cover. And then I saw the weather, and I was like – Yeah, the yes. weather was shit. Yeah. But like, so, then again, shout the Bears, out, shout Bears out have, Dominic Cataldo, yeah. who also lives in Chicago. He lives, he lives like a couple blocks away from Wrigley. He texted me and a couple of my friends that went to IU with him. He said, dude, it's a tsunami in Chicago right now. I'm betting 200 – and something dollars on the under and the under was like 39 i was like holy shit and the bears won 19 to 10 so he didn't even sweat it yeah not at all but yeah the bears i mean the bears fucking won that's all you can ask for my we were talking before me and ryan like the steelers steelers won beat joey b and the boys they almost fucking blew it five Um, turnovers for joe burrow my biggest takeaway from week one though was like Maybe preseason kind of matters. The quarterbacks who didn't play in the preseason were pretty bad. Yeah. Like, you could see the loss of chemistry kind of shine through. Yeah. And, like, I think the more and more defenses are able to, like – like, you know when it was, like, a time where no one could stop anyone? I think defenses are kind of coming back to being able to stop people. So, like, if a quarterback looks a little rusty, he looks very rusty. Um but, yeah, I think the fucking Cowboys, if you're a Cowboys fan, you have to be so disappointed because, like, you traded away Amari Cooper and your team literally no one on – no receiver could get open. Dak fucking looked horrible. Kellen Moore is such a bad offensive coordinator. It's absurd. <laughs> like, they – they actually were running the ball pretty well but wouldn't run the ball. And it wasn't yeah. like they were getting out at all, which is wild. Uh. Packers, I don't know, man. Like, Aaron, everyone gives Aaron Rodgers shit for not liking young wide receivers. I think you saw exactly why he doesn't like young receivers. Like, they did, they couldn't catch it when they were open, and they couldn't run routes. Yeah, and to be fair, like, what vetted quarterback coming off two straight MVP seasons, not named Aaron Rodgers, would want to be in that situation? I mean, it's – Right, like, for people giving him crap, it's like, dude, he's – there's a reason why he's still there. He wants to win a fucking Super Bowl. You giving him first and second guys who aren't even like, you know, a Jamar Chase first yeah. or second. They're like just regular ass receivers. Like, yeah, well, I would be pissed too. Now the um, only I, thing I would say though is he is he is getting paid fifty million a year. So with other they, quarterbacks, you see him take a little less money so they can have better talent. Yeah, but like you look at fucking Josh Allen's getting paid a fuckload, like there's a lot of quarterbacks that are getting paid a fuckload too that that do not take like his well, Josh is still on the rookie contract part, right? No, this is his first year in his new contract. 18, 19, 20. Oh yeah, I guess he didn't take the fifth year. Okay, yeah, you're so, right. But yeah, I mean to your point, like I think that the highest I think the six highest paid quarterbacks this week, Josh Allen was the only one who won. Gotcha. And, yeah, because Kyler Murray or like Patrick Mahomes and oh Mahomes, Mahomes lost one actually. Mahomes won, but like Kyler lost, Aaron Rodgers lost, yeah, Wilson lost, yeah. um, Joe, not Joe Burrow, uh, who was the other guys? It was I can't remember who, but yeah, Kirk Cousins like, is pretty high paid. Yeah, but I think he's not that high compared to everyone now. Like he was like the highest, Matt, or Matt Stafford lost. I know he's making. Yeah, he makes a lot too. 
But my other point of the NFL, and this is really all I have left of the NFL, because like the NFL, I think is more cut and dry. Like week one, you can't overreact because it's not like college where like some people's seasons are essentially done after week one. Like the NFL, you can start zero and three and fucking easily make the playoffs and be like very good. Yeah. Uh, but the Broncos, that game was one of the most absurd games I've ever watched in my life. Uh, that coach is the biggest fucking moron I've ever seen in my life. Bro, what is Melvin doing in the game? Like, no that, way. But, like. And what? why Why can't Russell Wilson just fucking sneak it? Like, they had three times they were inside the two-yard line. They even just sneak it. Why not let him throw, too? Do anything. Or, yeah, yeah, just throw a screen at least. Yeah, this guy was, like, afraid to call timeouts. Like, on the set, the play that Javante Williams fumbled on, they were hurrying up because there was like three seconds. First off, they did not call hike on a single snap that wasn't with two or one seconds left the entire time I watched, which was like the most absurd thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, how how are you not getting plays in quicker? Like, it is not that hard, right? And But they were rushing up to the line trying to get set. So, like, it was such a rush play that, like, the lineman was like, the guy who got blocked into Javante Williams is the guy who, like, is signaling to the center to snap. So he wasn't really ready at all because they had to no. snap. And it's like, why don't you use a timeout there? Like, mm. a score, a touchdown puts you up and you're winning. But then that last drive, like, dude, you pay Russell Wilson all this money to kick a 64-yard field goal for the win. Like, the most ridiculous thing ever. On yeah. top of if they just hurried up to the line and ran a play and didn't get it, they still could have got the ball back with, like, 35 seconds left because they had three timeouts. They let the yeah. clock go to – 20 seconds and called a timeout, which is the and most. I'm right there with you. Even before that, that when they were still on like their own, I think they were on like their own 28 or 30. Yeah. They, 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 they had a play. Um, I think it was first or second down. They, they had a play. It was just kind of a generic play up the middle. And, but the play started, there was like 228 or 227. Yeah. They, they did not get another playoff before the two minute warning. It's like, it, it kind of speaks to your hammering on how horrible the time management was. It's very, yeah. it's very uh, Mike McCarthy esque kind of deal. Even worse. Almost worse. I yeah. think almost worse. Cause like there was times also, but like some of the blame, does, I, I think, has to go to Russell Wilson. He's such a veteran. Like, you think he, like, you got to like, yell at people, like, get fucking yeah. set. So, like, I don't know. Like, they, they were just, they seemed so unprepared. And they, they have a good team. Like, they have a lot of talent. But it's like, yeah. that's how, they, I think they had 14 penalties. That's, like, absurd. Yeah. And, you know, they play in the hardest fucking division in football. So. You can't be losing to the fucking to Seahawks. The, you know, Right, yeah. like, you got to imagine they're going to lose at San- Los Angeles, at Kansas City. They're going to lose at least four of their six divisional games at this Right, and they at lost least. to the Seahawks. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that's just horrible start. That guy is such a fucking moron. Their yeah. head coach, I actually thought, like, most of the time, like, I'm pretty ridiculous in some of my takes, just, like, fucking fire him off. I actually think it would have been okay if they fired him after that game. Like, no joke, I actually do. Like, that was wow. that was first, one of the worst. Because that's his first, that was his first game, I, right? Yeah, and it should have been his last. Like, that was one of the worst <laughs> coaching performances I've ever seen in my life. It was like, bad. It looked like they were, like, they've never played football together. And the they were, play, like, this The play of, like, calling was throwing me in a fucking washing machine. That Speaking of that two-minute drive, it was like they had the ball with 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter. They were trying to kick a field goal, milk some clock, and do some weird things. It was like – Two and a half minutes to get down the field, and that's right. not even a eat. Like, also to my point of like the whole if they hurried up the line, they would have ran another play during before the two minute. Like, there's so many times they could have hurried up that if they did miss that field goal, they still could have got the ball back with like a good amount of time to kick another one. Like, it was insane to me. But yeah, yeah that was anything else from you? I mean, you, yeah, Bears are one. Um, of those. I no. guess from like a Bears perspective, like it's hard to get much gauge much of. Yeah. From week one because the weather was so bad. Um, that yeah. First, sure. That that first half was so tough to watch. Like no points. Um, I think we got like two first downs the entire first half. Um, 
I, it, but again, like the weather was so, so bad. Um, and then they come out and they're, they're running some really well controlled plays, um, like low percentage of disaster, I guess, but high yeah. enough percentage of success. Whereas we saw 49ers kind of go way too safe out of halftime. And yeah. then they were scrambling for big plays toward once they went down. So I think that speaks to Matt hard. Eberflus. I, his Matt Eberflus like had such a great gauge, and something we never saw with Matt Nagy was adjustments, great, great adjustments, game changing adjustments. Yeah, and at least we got that out of Week One. So at, the Packers looked really bad. Um, they did. The Vikings but, are good. But the Vikings could be amazing. So it's hard to tell, like, exactly where the Packers are sure. at still. Um, For sure. I, I don't think the Packers – the Packers are definitely not as good, but, like, the Vikings might walk away with that division. Yeah. But, like, everyone was talking about how much better the Packers' defense got this offseason to kind of support the loss of Devontae Adams. And then it, they were walking all over them. At some yeah, point. but I honestly think, like, so they hired the Rams OC. Like I think the Vikings might have a top five offense in football. Yeah. Like they, they as new long as coach new OC. Yeah. Like in like you got Justin Jefferson, you got Adam Thielen, like Dalvin Cook looks kind of like his old self. I know it was only one week, but like as long as Kirk Cousins just literally plays competent football, like they should be very good. Yeah. And Alexander Madison, the backup, like yeah, he could start on probably Six or seven sure. NFL teams. And w- one last thing before we get to our picks is, you know, we were just talking about how there's new coaches, new co- coordinators, new quarterbacks on different teams. Um, we saw the struggles with that in Denver with Russell Wilson, new head coach. Um, we saw the successes of it with um, the Vikings, new new head coach, new OC. I really thought the Dolphins were going to struggle more. Um, yeah, they look good. Yeah, with new head coach, Tua really hasn't like shown anything great so far. And then adding Tyreek Hill is going to solve all your problems. I was not a big believer. I, uh, my hot take in the first episode for the NFL was that the Dolphins were going to come in last um, uh, for the division, <clears throat> just because I like rooting for the Jets, basically. And Bill Belichick is still in the league. So that yeah. does not. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, but I mean, the the same the same scenario is true where you get new guys in those main positions that you need to be very good at to win Super Bowls or at least make deep playoff runs. Yeah, the Dolphins. Dolphins made good. Look like they made a good offseason adjustment to it. Their uh, their head coach is a really good coach. I think yeah, he. I think they will put, fit pretty well, even when they weren't the greatest. Their offense had like weapons that you know could be utilized. So two is definitely going to benefit from that. But also to the Tyree Kill point, like the Chiefs looked fucking good too. Like they both Tyree Kill looked really good, and the Chiefs looked really good. So yeah. like, seems like they both kind of are. You know, honestly, like a lot of people for whatever reason are writing off Mahomes, which is just kind of insane to me. But like. I wonder if he was a little banged up last year that you didn't really know about kind of thing. Sure. Like he, looked, he looked like really refreshed and like really like, you know, just rejuvenated. He, peak. he was peak yeah. Mahomes on Yeah, on like just making those insane throws, like being able to throw on the run. like And making that look easy, not just making that, make them look easy. Right. And like people do forget they were like, they should have beat the Bengals and they would have been in the Super yeah. Bowl. Not like they were like, round one exit blowout like right they're beating the Bengals all game and blew it in the second half and so, beat the bills in, in an insane yeah, game crazy game yeah. um but yeah that's all nfl yeah like i said nfl i think is more you gotta wait a few weeks because like it's not as college where you play 12 games four teams make the playoffs like nfl you know 17 games you gotta wait until like week five or six to make your really reaction reactions yeah but I mean, I'm just glad the Steelers won. Uh, it was good. There was a lot of good football games, though. Yeah, I was excited to watch this weekend. That's for yeah. Sure. Kickers, kickers being so inconsistent make the game so more unpredictable, which is great for like the fan experience. Maybe not if you're watching your team play, but like yeah. me as a Bears fan watching the Colts Texans game, 
that was pretty entertaining or watching the uh yeah like the Bengals Steelers game like yeah it made it exciting yeah the Colts Texans game like yeah if you didn't have money on it or not a fan of I don't know who's a fan of the Texans but a fan of the Colts <laughs> like that was a very like <laughs> hilarious awesome game to watch yeah I think I I think I had a total of three Colts fans over for that game and they were literally sinking into their chairs and obviously we saw the Colts uh cut Rodrigo Blankenship so yeah I mean he kicked out of bounds like his first three kicks on kickoffs missed yeah. all those field goals but yeah so let's get into our cards okay cool will... and just a reminder in case you skip the college football portion of this video um, we're partnered with Bet US, so use the affiliate uh, link in our description you'll get sign-on bonuses with cash 125 percent uh, if you use a cryptocurrency bitcoin you get a 200 percent sign on bonus so go check it out and while you're down there hit the subscribe button obviously we don't have ryan um he didn't give us his picks for nfl but obviously he has a couple of days and he might not make a thursday night pick today is thursday by the way um so if you want to check his picks check out our twitter uh victory lap bets on twitter follow us and then our main page victory lap media um, go check us out. Leave some comments if you have ideas, what you want us to talk about. Let us know. All right. So, All right. You ready? Oh, real All quick. Right. I'm going to do the uh, recap from week one. Sorry. Um, NFL week one, uh, Zach, three and one. Uh, he's plus 1.9 units. Michael, nice week, three and two, uh, plus 0.73 units. Ryan, five and five, minus 0.3 units. Not bad. I had a blunder and went three and six minus 3.45. I had a touchdown score on there, but still very bad. Um, so everyone won their do or die bet, except for me. Duh. Um, so I am over three so far on do or dies. But again, to have the punishment, you need to go. You need to lose three do or dies in a row in college or lose three in a row NFL. So. Um, so we ready? Yes, sir. Sorry. No, no, you're good. You're good. Um, okay. All right. I'm going to start off with the Lions minus one and a half at home against the Commanders. Lions money line minus 126. If you want, um, uh, Bet US has Lions minus one minus 115. Ooh, okay. Okay. There we go. Bucks. No, I don't want that. I want. <laughs> Oh my god, these lines are just um I'm gonna go the Giants money line minus one twenty six. I am going they got the to Panthers, go... right? Yeah. I'm gonna go Oh fuck, these lines are so crazy. Uh I'm gonna go Vikings plus one and a half, Vikings money line plus one twelve. So that is what five picks. And then I am gonna go I do have my do or die though. Um, I I don't know. I, I'm gonna go Bucks minus two and a half. Yeah, for the do or my... die. No, 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 no. Oh, my okay. do or die. My do or die. I'll just say it now is the Giants minus one and a half against the Panthers. All right, all right. I I like the the I like the Giants defense. They looked they looked pretty good against the Titans for the most part. And Dabble seemed like he knows how to get Saquon involved. So, like, that's a huge – Yeah, I plus. think I think Saquon had the highest uh, yeah, fantasy football yeah. uh, production week one. All right, yeah. so I'll do Zach's picks real quick. Um, Zach has five picks. Um, he has the Steelers plus two. Who do they play? Pats at home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I have that on my card. Um, wait. How the fuck did he get Steelers plus two? No, his, uh, there's a lot of his lines that we have to switch. Okay. They're two and a half. Well, the one I saw, they're minus one. Steelers, I just looked. They were two and a half when I saw. Plus two and a half? Plus two and a half when I saw, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, I'll take that. All right. Sorry. There you go. Uh, plus two and a half. Is it still minus 110? Uh, 
I believe so. I'm not sure. All right, we'll minus go. minus one fifteen. We'll figure that out later. Don't worry okay. about that. Um, and then Zach also has uh, Ravens minus three. Uh, they're at home against. Um, The Ravens, they play the Dolphins at home. The Dolphins, yep, yep, thank you. Uh, he's got the Bengals, minus seven. It looks like he bought a half point. Um, What's the drew? Um, okay. And then he's got the Bills, minus ten against the Titans. And he okay. has, and then his do or die will do at the end. Um, all right, so my card. Obviously, these lines are a little different, so bear with us. Uh, I got Ravens, minus three and a half. Um, at home against the Dolphins, yep. Lions, Lions minus one um, at the Commanders. Um, no, it's at home. They're at home against the Commanders. Thank you. Um, Bucks uh, under Bucks Saints under forty four and a half. Um, those games are crazy competitive the last couple of years. Yeah, this the Bucks defense looks really good. Um, I got the Rams over 46 and a half. Uh, Cowboys uh, plus seven and a half. I know no Dak, obviously, and they didn't look great. Um, but Cooper Rush looked really good against the Vikings the first full game he played when Dak got hurt last year. So I'm going to ride with Cooper Rush. And I feel like a large percentage of the public is going to be against. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So I'll take that. Uh, Cardinals uh, plus five and a half. Also coming off kind of a stinker of a game against the Chiefs. But Chiefs are a top three team in the league, in my opinion. So I'll take the points. I got the Bears plus 10 on the road in Lambeau. This is a totally biased pick, so don't take anything by it. And I got my do or die. All right. It's just your do or die and Zach, so. Okay. So, Z I have the Titans plus 10 at home against the Bills. Um, at the Bills. I think the Bills are obviously a fantastic football team, um, but – they really, they they really capitalized on the Rams turnovers, and I think the Rams had four or five turnovers. Yeah, the 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 Titans play a bit more snug. I think it's going to be pretty low scoring. I also like the under in this game, um, but I love Titans plus ten. And Zach's pick is the fuck is Zach's do or die is the Bears plus ten. Also Bears fan, so yeah, it's a tough pick, but. You know, and then you what? You, and then you got yours. Yeah, mine was Giants minus one and a half. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously we said Ryan's will be on our Twitter. So if you want to see Ryan's, check out the Twitter. Any other notes? Yeah. Any other comments? No, nope. I need to win in college this week. We both do actually. So yeah, we need some good weeks. So good luck to everyone again. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, check out the BetUS affiliate link again. Please subscribe. We're very close to 1,000. Me and Ryan will do sour cream in the coffee. Gross. Not looking forward to it. Um, but comment on our Twitter. DM us, whatever, if you have ideas or bets that you want to share with us. We'll definitely take a look at it. So good luck to everyone. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you again next week. Peace. Peace.